Okay, so thank you guys for coming. This is the 12 year meeting for uh, Jimmy Moyle's two teams. Uh, starting with this slide, by the way, Jimmy can't be with us. Jimmy is out of town. So I said, I'll still have the meeting. It's the right time to have a meeting. And basically the meeting serve as a time to initiate what's next. So it starts with, uh, it starts on our side of saying, here's the information. And then the side of the people who are sitting, uh, listening to the meeting and then watching it on video and going, okay, given that information, Yes, here's my decision-making process, but at least I have the content and the information. So it starts with us giving that out. Even though he can't be here, I said basically what Jimmy and I have put together as far as what the content is, I would share with you. So the first slide has absolutely nothing to do with you guys. This is a group that I had last summer. Um, that uh, It was our senior class group in Alaska. Um, so we had the vision of, of going to play in Alaska when I decided to bring back the Work Pitch 35 collegiate team. Um, I only put it out there just so you guys understand because it's hard because when you're when you're nine or ten years old the, the meeting that was in here was nine and ten year olds the only thing relevant to them is, is being a nine or ten year old for 12s the only thing relevant really is being a 12 year old and what does a 12 year old experience look like maybe 13 very seldom does someone have vision of understanding what could work or what doesn't work for years ahead and years behind you guys might have a pulse of what it looks like being an 11 u learning with do I play Little League or not as a 10 year old? Uh, do I do travel or not as a 12 year old? Some of those things you guys have had to answer and you still do. Um, the vision that I have from the top down, from 18U down and years and years of experience and also multiple teams at each level, um, allows me to make decisions that are not, that are very qualified decisions. Does it mean they're the right ones? Absolutely not. And we get feedback back from you guys uh, when it isn't and then we try to make the right decision. But I just wanted to show you this just so you understand what the major, that's the major league group of what Head First is. Another slide that's relevant in my mind, actually, this is not it. I'm gonna shift quickly to this other slide. Um, I, I slid this slide in there at the, last, at the last minute, even though not super relevant to you guys, but so you understand something about the bigger picture of what Head First is. The UD refers to the upper division, which is the high school division. You guys would be 12U, part of the LD, which is the lower division. The lower division goes up to 14U. So some things that I'm gonna go by really quickly. Um, in the last year, in 2019, we brought back our 18U teams. We didn't have them for a couple years, we brought them back. That was the Dark Pitch 35 team that I ran that we brought to Alaska. For college commits, we had over 30 guys from one class. Just the 2019 grads, over 30 guys went to play college baseball. Uh, 15 plus went to four years. Uh, 15 plus others went to junior college programs. Some of these guys being more compelling than some of these guys, they just went to the junior college as a way of then trying to go and pursue uh, their dream at the four-year level. Again, a staggering 30 plus guys from one grade level. This is the same in 18, 17, uh, it'll be the same in 20, 21, 22, 23, until your group gets there. So this is the reality, this is what we do. It's important for us that, that, it's, uh, that you guys know that. Also, the experience doesn't stop when you go to college. So we have alumni that are in college, we have uh, pro guys that come in and hit, um, some guys that are looking at transferring colleges and they ask us, can we help them? Can we, is there anyone we know? What's our insight on it? The point is, it doesn't just stop after head first. Uh, last year, as you guys know, it's hard to win a tournament. Tournament baseball is really difficult. We won over 69 uh, tournaments. We won 69 tournaments in 2019 to go with hundreds that we've won in the past. Again, relevant for you guys, just understand that um, the group that you're a part of has a lot of experience doing this. Um, in the last year alone, also good for you to know that a lot of teams are a team, a 12U team. They may have a 13, they don't have a 14, 15, or 16, or 17, or 18. For us, we have it from 18 down to 10, and then we have multiple teams within a division, all going toward the major league group of us. Our goal for young players is to play college baseball. It may not be the goal of young players, it's, it's our goal for you guys though. Um, it doesn't need to be your goal yet because you're so young, but it needs to be ours so that we can roll the red carpet out, which at one time it was our oldest team was 12 years. And then our oldest team was 14 years. Then we had a 16, and then we had an 18, and then we had multiples. Then we created college showcases, which is where we bring in coaches to watch our players. We had over 50 different college coaches attend just head first, head first events alone last year. Um, 50 different coaches representing 30 different colleges. Again, that's not including us sending guys out. So the more relevant information 
is what's next for you guys. So the current teams are gonna play and participate through January. The current teams though, there's a dilemma. I didn't put that up there yet. There's an eval and trial coming up. The dilemma for me in the current 12U division is we had 12U team and then we had an 11-12 team. Part of the reason for not having a, a pure 11 team or a, a second pure 12 is there wasn't enough. Uh, in the meantime, the 11-12, which was not the ultimate goal, but it was a way to get tournament um, experience. The 11-12 team, for me, I want to get rid of and create a pure 11 team. And then the question for me wasn't, do we even have another 12U team? Um, but on the, on the current pure 12 team of Moyles, we have new and talented players coming on board and we can't put them on the 11-12 necessarily because the caliber, no disrespect to the 11s, but they're 11. Uh, the caliber wasn't what we wanted, so then we added some more compelling players to the current 12 team, and ultimately this one becomes lopsided, and the other one becomes there's not enough for a team. So as I look at them, I go, wait a minute, why don't we do, why don't we restructure? Why don't we restructure uh, again? Because some of the current players that are coming in that are would be on the 11, the current 11-12 team, you guys know them as Cardinal and Black, right? The current 12 is Cardinal, is that right? And the 11-12 is Black. Some of the players coming in that we would put on black are more compelling than the players that are on, some of the players on Cardinal. But it wouldn't be the right fit for them, so I look and I go, okay, instead of an overflux where this team has 14 guys and this one has eight, and we backfill with guest players, but this one has six middle infielders, that doesn't make sense for me, having the vision that I have of what's ahead for you guys, for you guys to not be in the right place based on position and numbers. So, the long story short, I look and I go, okay, let's do, so I'm gonna get into the what of it and then the why of it. So there's gonna be, we're gonna use MLK Monday as a tryout evaluation day. Um, the location is Sycamore Valley Park, it's 9.30 to 11.30. There's not a cost for current head first players. Uh, this is also a time at 12U where many people think they're going back to Little League. They sign up, they go to tryouts and go, no, uh, I thought I was gonna do Little League, I'm not. Or they're on a team that's, gonna, that's not going to exist anymore. One way or another, everything we've been doing now is, is out of season. Now baseball season year round, truly baseball season begins in the spring. So when the spring comes, there's an influx and there's more and more 12U baseball players, 12U being the pinnacle and key year when most people play baseball. So there are more and more coming our way. This gives us a chance to get outside players in for the tryouts, as well as current players and players that are new. Tryout is not necessarily the right word, it's more of a placement or an evaluation. Um, the, this day is only for those that are playing as we enter into February. So if somebody says, uh, I want to play in January, I guess technically if they were playing in the summer and not the spring, it would still be relevant for them. Either way, it allows us to have uh, an evaluation. Is this for both? Is this for, is this just for Jimmy's teams? All teams. All 12, all 12 teams. Okay. Um, not Roberts. Roberts' two teams are set because of Cooperstown. So this is for Jimmy's teams. The spring placements will be one of two uh, 12U Gamers teams. Jimmy is going to be running both of these teams. So the 12U season and schedule, um, the teams are going to be for the spring and summer, which is February through July. Uh, this leads into the 13 phase, which ends up coming up very soon. Teams are going to practice twice per week, two, turn two tournaments per month, all of the same information that you guys already have. Really, it becomes the same program, though with new rosters. Uh, in part due to players and talent. The basic premise is to create um, new 11U teams for the younger, so if we take out the 11 teams and then we balance the 12-year-old teams, then what we have, um, and we'll discuss it more in a moment, but what we have is more balanced teams with lower rosters with players that are going to play more in their primary positions. So the, the naysayer of that concept, and again, I'm speaking with a lot of experience, not with concepts or theories or opinions, I'm saying based on the facts. The ideal is, for me, how can I get many of the top players in their primary positions? This has nothing to do with the non-top players. Um, in other words, if you have six middle infielders on one team, two can play in the middle infield at a time, and then other players go in the outfield. When you're 18, it works, because the top players are gonna be in the middle infield, and you just figure out that player is committed to a high division one, I'm not, he's probably a little more advanced than I am, he's gonna get the majority of the time. When you're 12, it doesn't work so well. Not from my perspective. Because my perspective is, how can you be the most talented players for a 13-year-old age group while having competitive teams at 12? So, um, 
while the, the top, so for me, the top of the two different teams is gonna be built with compelling players. And I don't know who they are yet. I don't know who they are, and it's, it's based on performance. So for some players who go, well, I had a really good fall winter, so I'm probably gonna kill it in the spring. Hopefully you do. Uh, conversely, if somebody goes, I didn't have that good of a fall or winter, or someone's new, there's, there's opportunity. Uh, there's opportunity, and again, on the current team, instead of having a high roster of 13 with a lot of people stepping on each other to get play time and opportunity, I look and I go, okay, if there are uh, 24 guys, instead of having a team of 14 and a team of 10, I would rather have two teams of 12 where the top eight don't come out of the game. Players 9, 10, 11, 12 on either team, you need to get better. You need to work and figure out how to get more competitive. But for me, the top 16 head first players are being serviced that way within the age group. Um, and I'm gonna identify what we do at 13U, which is the direction you guys are going in, so that it'll make sense to you. Um, in place of, so I'm aware that this group was going to Cooperstown and then it wasn't. I really don't have anything to do or have a lot of knowledge of what the whole Cooperstown experience is, except for the pass on that there's a concept of Reno Nationals. Reno Nationals um, is, I think, six days in Reno, which some could be really good or really bad, depending on, I guess, your time at the tables. Uh, but from a baseball perspective, um, this tournament, for people who know, uh, they end up loving this tournament. The talent is, I think, good, not great overall, like Cooperstown, which is also good, not great, until you get to the end phase where you're facing some high talent. Uh, this one's the same way. So I think this is probably the most important slide, and I've covered some of it already. And in no particular order, we've had an influx of 12 new talent, which has resulted uh, in a roster dilemma for us. Um, and again, this has created good opportunity for us to divide the teams rather than have one that's numerically lopsided. Um, another thing, we've added more players to the Cardinal team uh, recently because their talent level begs that they were on the older of the two teams, the Cardinal rather than the 11-12 but we also have had Cardinal players that are injured and Cardinal players that are out. So then we look and go, numerically it's worked out so far, but then when those players are not injured anymore and they come back in the mix, then what? So the people who are here are like, oh, that's easy. Move the newest players off. And it's like, well, no, it doesn't really work that way because some of them are gonna be uh, more compelling than the players who are there already. So then some of the more compelling players would look and go, no, 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 don't move the new players off. They're better. Move the non-best players off because I want to be more competitive. There's not a wrong or right answer to any of it. So I look and I go, what is the most diplomatic way to create opportunity across the board within this group? And I go, okay, if Jimmy Moyle, who's bringing back the gamers teams, um, <coughs> two teams that are balanced, similarly balanced in terms of talent, in other words, you need if, if a compelling catcher goes here and a compelling catcher goes here, uh, a, a compelling shortstop goes here, and Playing shortstop goes here. They both need enough pitching. They both need enough of everything. Also with respect to friendships. Um, some people that really want to play with another friendship or carpools or all of that, then we go, okay, we need all of the data and information on the front side, not after the teams are chosen because a lot goes into the selection process. So um, this was initially possible to have balanced teams in terms of talent, especially with the, the fact that we had 11, uh, 12 switch teams or mixed teams. What we're doing, and this is an important slide, we're copying the 13U level, uh, which will help prepare you for going forward, rather than looking at the past. So again, the objective there is you guys can understand your 12U fall, not spring or summer, because it hasn't happened yet. You can look at 11U, a 10U, but it's hard for you to look at what's going forward unless you have an older son who's 13 or 14. The current 13U model, um, my brother has a team that's been together for a very long time that's a very, very compelling team. It's the most successful, one of the most successful teams we've ever had. We had the decision to go, okay, do we create an AB for Tommy Amato's two Berkovich teams, um, or do we, do we make it balanced? Um, I ran the 13-year-old group a couple years ago, and I decided by far and away balanced, because I want to have the top players on the field on both teams all the time. And so then the top players are serviced, because they don't come off the field. Where if you created a better team by putting them all together, it's not necessarily better. The reason I say that is most of your games are not won with players number 9, 10, 11, or 12. They're not won or lost because they're probably not pitching. Maybe they're up. Maybe they're not getting on base enough. In general, though, 
the, the games are going to be won with players one through six, and they're probably going to be mostly in the middle infield. You probably don't win or lose based on your left fielder who is out there three innings per game. I, I don't know who they are, but I'm just saying this is not how baseball works. You're going to lose based on is the pitcher good enough on the mound on a given day. So again, uh, it goes away to service the, the higher end players um, by putting them on the field and they get to develop at a, at a faster rate. Who are the most talented players? It changes every time. And if someone wasn't for the fall winter, so what? If that's behind you, you better kill it now though. Um, and if you were in the fall winter, good, you have equity. So now going into it, you're gonna get opportunity first because you deserve it based on the equity that you have. So um, I mentioned this was not really the plan. It is going forward. So Tommy Amato, by the way, thir at the 13U level, you have two Berkovich teams, which are two even teams. Uh, so again, uh, big strong first baseman here and there. A balance of left-handers instead of having too many lefties on one team or something like that. A balance of middle infielders, a balance of pitching. Um, <coughs> And both teams, are, both teams are very competitive. And the, the better players are doing very well. And they're in their primary positions more than if we put all of the top 13s from that group on one team, then you have people that aren't, that probably should be playing shortstop and they're not even at second because there's too many guys around. Um, teams are gonna be chosen by positions and talent. I've already shared that. My, my personal desire is that top players in the field uh, and in primary positions rather than having, I, I say a team of six middle infielders because the, the Cardinal team, the, the pure 12, almost pure 12, um, as I look at it, I, as, as we write up the, the diamonds and who goes in what position, that team has six middle infielders at least, not including the possibility of a couple guys, not including a couple new guys who are arguably the starting middle infield out of the whole group. And again, even for the people that are on Cardinal, you don't know, what you don't know is some of the players who are new and coming in. So it's hard to be able to tell what it is until you see the new player. Um, it's critical on our side to know uh, roster needs right away. Again, friends, carpools, compelling situations. Um, I want to be on the bad of the two teams so I can play more. Well, there isn't. That doesn't exist. Um, I want to be on the better one so that whatever, well then lie and say that you're best friends with the best guy. I don't know, something like we're trying to make them balance or say your carpool is the stud guy and it's like, all right, well, we kind of feel compelled unless we do the, the intel and figure out like now he's trying to hustle it, which we go, forget that, let's honor that. We want to win that battle, let's do it. Like, let's figure out a way. Um, and again, the other thing is, what this allows us to do also is be very selective about who else gets on board. So then we go, to, if we had 10 guys per team, we go, we're good right there. Um, everyone's pretty happy in the beginning. And then we go, okay, we don't need another player. But if there's another player coming, which by the way, the players currently would probably come from Robert Morales team, where they go, I thought this was gonna be the promised land and be great, except for we have high rosters with a whole bunch of players that are similar on top of each other. So we don't prefer that, which is what would, was happening right here too. We don't prefer that. We want, it, uh, we want to contact Jimmy, contact Mario about playing on one of Jimmy's teams because we think there's going to be more opportunity there. So again, the players that are coming, we're not looking for more of what we currently have. We're looking for upgrades. Um, so it's good. Uh, that's the way we want it going forward as you go into 13U as well. So then we go, we have four good 12-year-old teams going into the 13-year-old year. We're fine right there. And the amount of people that we get in spring, summer that try out for the fall each year is about 20 to 30 at uh, uh, probably 10 to 20 new ones in this age group of 20 because it's a hot time to play baseball. The finance of it, my, I have nothing to do with the finance. This is a slide created by my brother that I'm going to share the information with you. There's a new system called Cura Cubby. I know uh, my brother chose it, something that... Um, Many schools and businesses. Do you guys already know about this or not? Okay. Um, he's going to send information out. It's user friendly. It allows you to manage your own account. You can all, you can do bank account or credit card. You get your invoices. Basically, it's the new system that they're, that my brother's going into where you you guys go through Cure Cubby, which is going to be I think better for everyone. Uh, Twelve U Gamers program. It's still it's the same cost. None of that has changed. Um, there's a Cure Cubby charge that applies. So. There's, Cure Cubby has a charge per person or per month or something like that, so I don't know what the fee is, but I know there is one. 
Team pages, you guys already know this information. This is George Athens' slide because he manages team pages. Uniform needs go through him. There's some that are through West Coast. Your team practice and team event schedule and coaches' contact information all can be found on your team pages. The BBF banquet, it's important to, to share. Uh, we have the fifth annual banquet coming up this year. Um, BBF is a group. Okay. I'm a Star Wars fan, so when I say BBF, I think. Hello, okay. No, BB-8, BB-8, so I keep looking going, is that BB-8 or BBF? BBF is the Berkovich Baseball Foundation. It doesn't have anything to do with Berkovich teams. Uh, it's a foundation that's created to help players with financial hardship. Our event this year is gonna be at the Blackhawk Auto Museum. Who's been there? Who's been to the, okay. I never have, I, I've been on the outside. So just the fact the outside is so cool, I can't wait to go inside and check it out. Um, so that's where our event's gonna be. We'd love to see you there as a guest. The tickets are sold on the website. Also, this one's important. Um, we don't know who's blessed in what way out of the folks that, that are part of the organization, some of whom have access to cabins, vacation homes, timeshares, um, stuff. So if there's something that you think people would like, for example, a couple years ago, there was a dad of one of our juniors that was um, part of the Coast Guard, or he was, in, he was in the Coast Guard, and he said, Mario, do you think people would like um, to go out on a yacht um, with the meals provided? Um, a select group, six, I think six people in a yacht in the Monterey Bay for a day with the food provided. And I was like, yeah, I would. Like, I'll, I'll make sure I bid on that. And he's like, yeah, I can, I can donate that if you guys want. Like, Please do that. So we don't know uh, how you guys have been blessed. So if somebody has access to anything like that, it definitely goes to a very good cause. Last slide, which is the what's next. So probably before the what's next is you guys that are here as well as the folks that are watching the video to, to get the information, which you guys are, are kind of 95% done with. We do our Q&A and we'll be there. So it's getting the information, feeling comfortable with the information, then RSVP by email um, for the MLK uh, evaluation day. It's attending the eval. Uh, after that, you receive placement information. Again, Jimmy Moyle does all of this. I'm here as the messenger and providing the information through Jimmy, and then I will be able to answer the questions that I know. Otherwise, the stuff gets directed to Jimmy. Um, and then after receiving that, you commit to the spring summer team placement. All of this being done in January for the purpose of starting fresh in February. So again, February, March, April, May is kind of the spring. June, July becomes the summer. So, it's, so these new teams are for a significant amount of time. Um, I put an asterisk down at the bottom, which is attending summer tryouts for 13 new uh, fall tournament teams. So your 12 year old year comes and goes really quickly. My advice is trying to situate yourself through performance um, as well as you can because it's not going to get less competitive. It's going to, it ends up getting more and more and more competitive. So if somebody goes, well I don't, I don't, I'm not in love with my current placement. Um, and I go, you're part of an organization unlike any other. None can boast what we bring to the table. Number one, so you're in the right place. You're playing for a coach who's coached at six or seven different colleges as well as being a college player, who cares for you, who's part of Head First Management and strategic in the overall direction and planning of Head First, which means you're playing for a very good coach. If there's a better option, and I would personally say, please let me know what it is so I can talk through it with you uh, because you're probably being misled. I know what the organization is and the coach you're playing for. Um, the only thing you could say is, there's a teammate that I'm not fond of, or I wanna be on a better team, or a worse team, or a taller team, or a shorter team, or some funky desire that you might have. In general, um, what we're offering is something that's very good in an organization that's very good, coaching staff that's very good, infrastructure that's very good, that has upward mobility that's going to go into even more competitive teams. Um, will these teams exist after the summer season? No. So if you have the best experience of your life, it's over. Um, and if you have experience where you, there's more or different or something else you want, it's coming. Um, now, where do you place yourself? It's not by signing up and saying, I choose to be on that team. Perform your way there. Um, so uh, how do you do that? Winning more on the mound or throwing more strikes, being more compelling on the mound, more compelling with the bat, and again, all of this changes every year. If we all looked at the, all of the 12-year group and tried to predict who the most compelling 13-year-olds would be, we'd all be wrong. 
and, and that's baseball. We wouldn't be able to tell who's gonna grow, who's not gonna grow, who loves baseball and is gonna put in the work, who's doing it because mom or dad is kind of forcing them to, who considers it a hobby, who wants to make a career out of it, uh, genetics and how that plays a part in it, who's gonna fundamentally outwork the rest, who has a heart for the game under pressure, who, who shows fear, who doesn't, we don't know all of that. So the way for us to know, and we're in a slow play, because I just want something good from 12 to go to something good at 13, and then good at 14, and good at 15, and that's what I offer. Great, can't plan that. So when we try to plan great on the front side, it implodes, and it doesn't necessarily work that way. But if we can shoot for good, and then you have the right chemistry, the right group, the right coach, then you hit some success, and then you find great. But um, we aspire to be great, but when we go, I need everything to line up right. Well, what are the practice days? Uh, Monday and Wednesday, uh, it's not gonna work. I love the whole thing, but Wednesday, I need it at 5.30, not 5.45. So I'm just saying, something like that, there are people like that, um, they end up going to a different organization, not finding what they're looking for, to another, to another, and we see them on a bunch of different teams and go, all right, it's right where they were, and they were part of our plan. We wish that they had stuck there, but if they did, they wouldn't have been happy. Um, so again, the encouragement for you guys, Get the information, wrestle with it, ask the questions, um, and then go, go for it and have a good experience along the way. And hopefully with a little magic, it uh, turns into great. I'm gonna turn this off and then I'm gonna answer questions.